Welcome to our next surface modeling project. In the next several lessons, we'll be creating a fabric softener bottle and then calculating the volume of liquid that it holds. The end result will be what you see here in my graphic area, and I'm going to take you through it step by step. Let's begin with just a few general comments on the design and production. You might be working with a sketch or artist's design. These will be just one of your guides, however. The production process will also be a guide, and it'll have many important specifications for you. For example, the blow molding. The tooling master might have requirements like the draft angle. And you, of course, may also have some general requirements to adhere to, like dimensions, for example, height and width, volume, or how much liquid the bottle should hold, like one gallon or one liter, what size of handle grip is required, the diameter of the cap, the shape and volume of the cap, what size of box the bottle needs to fit in for shipping, on and on. I did want to take a moment to mention these specifications because even though in this lesson we're creating this bottle from scratch, in the real world you'd have a number of unchangeable requirements that your design would need to adhere to. Let's begin with a new SolidWorks part document. We'll start with an outline sketch for the front surface. Let's right-click on the front plane, Insert Sketch. And let's activate the center line tool. I'm going to drop a couple lines right about here. Right click, end chain. One more line here. Right click, end chain. And another line. Right click, end chain. Last line here. Right click and select to deactivate the tool. Let's apply dimensions now. My longest line will be 190 millimeters. This line I'll make 125 millimeters. 30 millimeters here, OK. And here, 45 millimeters. And 35 millimeters here, OK. One more dimension. Let's make this 90 millimeters. Now we're going to use the spline tool, and we'll be using this to create the outline for the front surface. Right click, select to close the tool. Let's exit the sketch. And let's take an isometric view. Next, I'm going to create profiles for the front surface. Let's start from the top plane. Right click, insert sketch. I'll use a three point arc first. And I'll place it about here. I'm moving my mouse, searching for the vertical relation symbol. Remember, the long arrow is the vertical axis. The vertical relation symbol appears, and I left click to accept. Now let's use a center line. I'm going to connect this point to this point. Right click, end chain. And let's connect the center point with the arc's midpoint. Right click, select to close the tool. Let's apply dimensions to our arc now. This length will be 110 millimeters, OK. Right click, select to close the tool. Let's select the center point and shift select this point at a coincident relation. Let's apply a last dimension here. 250 millimeters, OK. Our sketch is in black line and fully defined. Let's exit the sketch. And let's unselect everything just by clicking an empty space. I'm going to pre-select the top plane and then insert a reference plane. It'll go through this point here, parallel to the top plane. Let's accept. OK, right click and insert a sketch. Let's place another three point arc. Once again, I'm looking for the vertical relation. I'll left click when I see the glyph and the center line. Let's connect these two points. Right click and chain. And let's connect the center point with the midpoint of the arc. Right click and select to close the tool. Let's dimension this construction line at 110 millimeters. OK. Right click and select to close the tool. 
Now select this point and this point, add a coincident relation. And here let's modify, we'll apply an 80 millimeter radius. Okay, we're ready to exit this sketch. Let's insert one more reference plane. Let's select this plane and plane. It'll be parallel to plane one and it'll go through this point here. Okay, right click and insert a sketch on our new plane. Once again, we need a three point arc. Let's place it about here. Center line. Connect the two endpoints of the arc. Right click and chain. And connect the center of the arc and the midpoint of the arc. Right click and select to close the tool. The reason I've established a vertical relation between these two points is so that when I connect the two points with a center line, the vertical relation will be applied automatically. And when I connect the two center points, the horizontal relation will apply automatically also. Okay, let's apply dimensions to our arc. They'll be the same as the previous dimensions on the arcs. 110 millimeters here. If I apply a dimension to the arc right now, the arc is going to move outside the graphic area. To avoid this, I'm going to apply a coincident relation first. There we go. Now the arc is attached to this point and won't move outside the screen. 250 millimeter radius here. Okay. And our sketch is fully defined, so let's exit. And let's hide planes one and two. Right click, hide, and right click again and hide. Let's go to the surfaces tab, activate the lofted surface tool. Select the first arc, the second arc, and then the third arc. Lastly, we'll select a guide curve. Accept. And here is our front surface. Be sure to save your part document now and see you back in our next lesson. This concludes our first lesson on the bottle model.